In this video we're going to review how to do some power-ups in our racing game. So in our game here we want to have some power-ups pop up on the track somewhere and you're really just going to have to decide what kind of power-ups you want and where you want them to be and how you're going to set them all up. Um, but we're going to go kind of over the steps of making power-ups happen here. Um, so the first step is we need to actually have uh, a power up prefab that we're going to be able to use. So uh, we'll go look here in our asset panel and I made a power up prefab here already. So we'll look at that in the inspector. Um, we've got our graphical piece here. I've got a 2D box collider on here. That's a trigger. Uh, and I tagged it as a power up. So we need a tag on there as well. Because when you do collision, you want to check the tag to see if it's a power up that you hit or not. Okay, so now we have one of these. Let's see where I dropped this in the map. Okay, put it right there, which is just above my players here. Let's actually get these AI racers out of my way. I'm just going to turn them off for right now. Okay, so they're turned off now, uh, and they won't be in the way. So we've got a, a, a prefab here. It's got the collider. It's tagged. All right. So first thing we want to be able to do is to be able to collide with this thing. So that means our player is going to need to be able to collide with the power up. So we're going to add that to our player script. So our player script here um, needs to have an on trigger enter uh, function in it here. So here's on trigger enter 2D. Uh, and we're going to check to see if the other thing we just hit was tagged as a power up. If so, uh, this power up is going to give us a temporary speed boost. So we're going to set our top speed to 15. Um, and then we're going to call a little function that we're going to use as a timer, which will allow us to use that power for a certain amount of time. And then it'll set us back to our normal top speed. And then, of course, we want to destroy that power up off the screen so that it doesn't remain there. Once we touch it, we want it to disappear. So, um, Power up timer is right here, this function. But we're going to use a yield wait for seconds command. Yield wait for seconds will uh, take a number of seconds in here, in this case five. And what it'll do is when it calls this function and hits this line, it'll basically put this function on pause. It'll set a little alarm for five seconds in the future to tell it to come back to here and do whatever is left underneath this yield wait for seconds command line here. So It'll wait for five seconds, then we're going to set our top speed back to our normal top speed. Now, this is a new variable that I put at the top that is going to be uh, used just to hold our starting top speed so that we can go back to it. Because here's our normal top speed that we're using in the game to control the top speed. So when I change that to allow my player to go faster when it hits the power up, I have to have saved my where I was before for top speed when I started so I can go back to it. So in the star function I just took my new top speed variable equal to this one so that we would save it right away. We are sending the top speed out in the inspector so it's not in the script here anywhere. So we just want to save that and store it so we can go back. So again then when we hit a power up our on trigger enter 2D function will know that we hit the power up. We will take our top speed from a 10 in this game to a 15 We'll set the timer here to turn that back when that five seconds expires. Our top speed will go back to 10 because that's what we would have soared there. And we're good to go. So let's just see if that looks like it's working in our game. So I'm going to click on my player here. Um, you can see his current top speed is 10. So when I hit play, I'm going to roll up and touch that uh, guy here. So let's roll up here and touch the power up it disappears. I'm going to pause it. You'll notice over here that top speed is now 15 and if I start playing again after five seconds pass we'll see it change back. So we're just watching top speed here and got to stay in the game window there. It There it goes. It popped back. Alright so there you go. There was a um, power up that we could pick up that would um, affect us for a, a certain amount of time in this case change our top speed. Now the other part then, now that we have this power-up working, is how can we actually get power-ups into our game, in our map? 
So we've got a couple of things we could do. We could just drag some power-ups out here and just position them on our map where we want them to be. Uh, and they're just first person who hits them gets to use them and they don't come back. Uh, um, we could make these power-ups so after they're picked up by somebody that they'll pop back up after a certain amount of time uh, so that someone else can touch it. You also have to decide do you want your AIs to use the power-ups or not. That's all up to you. Um, I will show you one quick way that we can spawn some power-ups in. So I'll take that one out of the scene here. I've still got it down here in my uh, project panel as a prefab. So one thing I did was in the game manager script, when the game started, I just spawned in some power-ups. Okay, I spawned in one here. And what I did is I thought, well, hey, I've got some points out here already um, that are my, my waypoints or my checkpoints in here. So I just decided, since these were already all stored in an array, I'd just pick a random waypoint and spawn a power up there. So you could do that. You could use your waypoints, or you could put in some special just empty game objects that are marked as uh, spawn points for power ups, so you can control where they are, and you can spawn random ones in or spawn at random places. So what I did here is I just made a transform variable to temporarily store a spawn point. I went to my checkpoints array, that's right here, my checkpoints transform array. And I said, hey, get me one of those random transforms out of that array. So I used random.range, I said pick me a number between 0 and 24. I currently have 23 checkpoints, but random.range won't pick the last number in your, um, in your max here. It'll only go up to 23 in this case, it's exclusive of the last number. So it'll return me a value between 0 and 23, which will get me one of the index numbers out of checkpoints. That'll get me one of those transforms. And then I'm going to instantiate a power up prefab. Now again, you need a variable to hold your prefab so you can spawn it. So um, we did this and we assigned it out in the inspector. So it's a make me a power up, put it at the spawn points position and the spawn points rotation. And um, then all we had to do to make sure this was set up was in our game manager, make sure your power up prefab is set to your prefab. So you can just drag and drop that out here. And we hit play now, and we'll notice our lightning blue pulled up here. And in this case, he pulled up right here. It's at waypoint 14. So he's sitting right here. Um, if I run it again, you'll see this time he popped up at waypoint 15. So he's picking a different waypoint each time uh, to pop up at. Okay, so that's a simple example of how to do a power-up. You could have multiple different types of power-ups. You could um, make it so that the enemies can also pick up and use these power-ups if they happen to run through them. Lots of different options that you have, but that's the basic idea for how you make one. Get it into your game, spawn some in, pick them up, apply an effect, uh, and all of that. So I hope this helps you with your power-ups, and we'll see you in the next video.